So we're back in Psalm 119, and this week we're going to start from verse 97. And we're going all the way down to verse 104, so I'll begin by reading. Mem, O oh, how love I the lot thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Amen. So we pick up from verse 97. So, Mem, O oh, how love I thy law, it is my meditation all the day. And this ought to be our testimony, really. But can we honestly say that? It is my meditation all the day, O oh, how love I thy law. Two cross-references to look at. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And Second Corinthians uh, ch uh, 10 verse 5 says this, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, we, we live in a time today where... We're all bombarded with messages about uh, mental health and mental illness and anxiety and depression and so on. And this emphasis on uh, depression and despair and hopelessness, it coincides with the fact that today people are living more ungodly lives and more sinful lives than they ever have done before. And I believe that the Bible is being read less today than it ever has been read before. And with, with the Lord... All throughout the Psalms are reminded that you have life and peace. And David, he enjoyed this life and peace. And from this verse, you know, we, we read that his obsession was, was the Lord and, and the Word of God. He absolutely loved it. He had his efforts and energy uh, channeled in the right direction. He wasn't uh, focusing on all, all the things apart from God, the, the, the wicked, depraved things. I was thinking this as I was reading the verse, you know, without the Lord you have absolutely nothing. You know, the atheist who rejects God has nothing, no promises to lean on, no God to call upon, no God to ask for help, and no comfort. You know, and it's no wonder why people do the despicable things that they do. You know, the, the, the Moors murderers and, all, and the, all these people you hear about in the press who do these unspeakable things. But really, it all begins with their meditation. What are they choosing to uh, meditate upon? It begins in the mind. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 says this, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And Proverbs 23 verse 7, the first part of the verse says this, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what is your meditation all the day? The next verse in Psalms 119, verse 98. Though through thy commandments, thou through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. The commandments of God, they were ever with David. And speaking of enemies, you know, as, as a Christian who's really trying for the Lord, really living for the Lord, you'll gain a lot of new enemies that you never had before. You know, it said that dead fish are swept along with the current, and that's how life is before salvation. You know, you go to work, you pay your bills, have your holidays, and go along to get along. There's not much controversy there. You don't go out of your way to rock the boat. But once you start living for the Lord and getting deeper into the Word of God, you realise that you're going to be in for a fight in this world. You know, at times against your family against the education system, you know, particularly if, you've, if you yourself are in school or if you've got children in the education system, against you know, the wicked laws of the government, against 
uh, liberals and apostates who call themselves Christians but go out of their way to uh, hinder evangelism and gospel work. And this same crowd will also be against you for believing that the Bible is free from errors. If you stay with the Lord and if you stay with his word, you'll see that you'll be kept out of a lot of sorrow and heartache that many people go through because of poor choices. And we say this week in, week out. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, the people who are against you, for they are ever with me. You know, th think about the, the enemies of God who are now our enemies, those who attack the Bible and the choices they make. Once you turn from the Word of God, you turn to something else. You know, think about it this way, in terms of wisdom we get from the Bible that the world rejects. You know, if you stay away from alcohol, you'll be avoiding sclerosis of the liver and all the bad things that come along with drunkenness. You know, if you stay away from uh, sexual sin, you'll avoid disease and sorrow. If you stay away from covetousness, you'll not be controlled by the love of money. And these things, uh, the enemies of God and those that reject the word of God, they stumble into, unfortunately. They're not wise in that sense. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I was thinking this, if you obey the Lord, you'll have understanding about life far above that of the enemies of God. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 18 says this, It is good that thou shouldest uh, take hold of this, yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. For he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. It'll work out one day. Verse 99, Psalms 119, 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are thy meditation on my meditation. And I was reading this first, you, know, you might think that might be an arrogant thing to say, you know, oh, I know more than all my teachers. But think about it this way. You know, if you've been taught evolution, the Big Bang, global warming, annihilationism, so that's the thing of there being nothing after death, uh, moral relativism and, and situational ethics, in plain English, that's the thing that there's no right or wrong. Everything is based on opinion without God in the picture. If you've been fed this at school and a host of other things that contradict the Bible, you can honestly say that you have more understanding than these teachers. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. You know, the same thing can be said of, of so called Christian colleges and seminaries who don't take the Bible at face value and correct it with the Greek. And, and, you know, things like the real meaning of the word ought to be this, and this is a mistranslation. What should really be written here is, is such a thing. If you approach the word of God humbly, if you take uh, the word of God as it is, a child could have more understanding than a man with a triple PhD or THD. And concerning this, this is what William Tyndale said in the 1500s when facing against... Uh, the biggest crowd of Bible rejectors, the Roman Catholic Church. He said this, and I thought this ties into the verse nicely, I defy the Pope and all his laws. If God spare my life, I will make a boy that driveth the plough know more of the Scripture than thou dost. If you come to God humbly, you will learn and grow. And if you come to God in your arrogance and pride, correcting the Bible, twisting it and changing it, you won't receive anything. Verse 100, Psalm uh, 119, verse 100. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. That's interesting, isn't it? The ancients, you know more than them because you, you keep thy precepts, you stick to the Bible. Again, you might say, this is an arrogant thing to say. You know, oh, you're better than the ancients. But with the Bible, it's very true. You know, we, we've come up against this thing before we, we don't need the bible plus anything some people say you, you need to be following the bible plus the writings of the church fathers from nearly 2,000 years ago and thinking about the, the sorts of people we deal with that there's a renewed interest isn't there in the ancients and ancient things and the occult all, the, all these mysterious teachings from ancient times eastern mysticism uh, buddhism yoga and all that other um, Rubbish, basically. <laughs> I understand more than the ancients. We think about what, the, what these people do, particularly people like the Freemasons, the, the ancient secrets of Egypt. That's what they're all about. 
you know, people who want to go back to ancient uh, pagan practices all over England with, you know, crystal shops and druid rituals at Stonehenge and witchcraft. But when push comes to shove, these people, they have nothing to offer you. They're, they're stumbling around in the dark and they have no final authority. They have nothing uh, solid and authoritative to turn to. And we've had people like this come to our church out of curiosity. You know, once you reject the word of God, you're floating around without an anchor. You're unstable and you'll be easily deceived. I understand more than the ancients. You certainly do with the Bible. Psalms 119 verse 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. That speaks of discipline and, and having a heart that wants to please the Lord. You know, if you love the Lord, it will show. It will show in your life and the fruit you bear for him. And if you don't, that will show too in, in, the, in the life you live, in the decisions you make. And I was thinking this, you know, that there's a lot of Christian celebrities, isn't there, all over the internet with big followings. But there's a, there's a big danger associated with some of these characters. You hear what they say, but you don't see how they live. I've refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep my word. Psalms 119 verse 102, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. You know, David, is, he is stable in his walk with the Lord. He is not being pulled from pillar to post. I have not departed from thy judgments. He is not departing from the truth once he's received it. And that's how we ought to be. Verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Oftentimes when we're going through uh, difficulties in life, trials and situations we have no control over, we find the word of God to be more refreshing than ever. It really does speak to us. There's nothing sweeter. There's nothing else that satisfies like the very words of God. Verse 104, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And that's the last verse of uh, this portion of Psalms 119. And we, we Christians, you know, we're not hateful people. We, we don't, you know, we get accused of being hateful because we say there's only one way to heaven. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, there's nothing else. But we're not hateful people. We don't hate the Catholics or the Mormons or all these people. We, we hate the systems that they're part of because they're enslaved, they're in bondage, they're deceived, they're trapped. But we don't hate them, we want to see them released, we want to see them saved. And if our heart is right with God, we ought to hate the things that God hates. Amen.